All right, so now that we've had some time with the wing on land, and we've familiarized ourselves with the activity of flying the wing, we're gonna introduce the next piece of equipment into the equipment sphere, and that is the board. Now you have a couple choices when you get to this stage. For those of you that already may have some foiling experience or may have already purchased some foiling gear, you can go with a either inflatable or hard, large style hydrofoil board. And that is gonna be a totally different set of learning experience. In this case, you could also choose on a keel style board that's gonna ride on the surface of the water. For those of you that are never ever hydrofoils or wind sporters, or even some of you that are doing a hydrofoil sport but are new to the sport of winging, I would highly encourage you to take the path of the keel style board that rides on the surface of the water at least for a couple of hours to get yourself familiar familiar with the wing in the water and getting up on the board. This will lead to a much more rapid progression and ramp up in your learning curve. So again, we want to recommend that you start on a keel style board, but at this point you have your choice between a keel style board or a hydrofoil style board. So we're going to be going over how to set up and deal with your keel style board, get you in the water and get you your first session wing foiling. When making the choice on what piece of equipment is right for you, especially when it comes to keel style boards, you have a couple of options. Option one is to take an existing board, a hard board that has a fin box in the center of it in order to take a keel. And a keel, as we're referring to, is a large dagger board style fin that is going to sit in the center of the board. This fin in complements with the rear tracking fin allows the board to move across the wind, therefore allowing you to actually stay up wind. So what you're looking for in a, a hard style keel board is a board that is large, easy to stand on, something like a large SUP or windsurfer that has a box in the center that can accept a keel style fin, whether that's a Tuttle box or a regular fin box. In addition, Slingshot makes a great product called the SUP Winder stick-on kit. What this allows you to do is take a sticker and basically stick a fin box to the bottom of any hard board, allowing you to run our SUP Winder style keel fin and therefore converting any hard board into a Supwinder style tracking board. Now we have separate videos and information on how to find the right placement for that and to apply all that stuff. So if you're interested in the stick on Supwinder kit, please visit slingshotsports.com and get some more information there. Now, in my case, teaching Wing Foil Academy, I believe firmly in the um, inflatable board category. One, they're smaller to deal with. I can fit like 10 of these in my car. Two, they're extremely durable and safe for everyone from grannies to little kids. And three, they're a little bit more cost effective in terms of longevity of the product and the use. So again, my recommendation here is to go with an inflatable style board. So we're gonna be choosing the inflatable style board for this module and we're gonna go over how to set this thing up so that you can get in the water and get your first session. Okay, to go ahead and set up your inflatable style tracker or keel wind board, the things that you're gonna need are the board itself, this board comes with all of the stuff you need to set it up. So let's go ahead and pull them out of the bag and go over the parts and pieces. First and foremost in the front, you're gonna find your rear fin. It's a standard longboard fin. It's gonna go in the rear of the board. Next, you're gonna pull it out of this carrying case. You're gonna have the inflatable board itself. You'll notice that it's gonna be rolled up in order to take up a lot less space. That's one of the big pluses to using an inflatable style board. Additionally in here is going to be your keel fin, a repair kit, just in case something happens with your kit. And finally, it's gonna come with a high pressure SUP pump. Now in this case, because we're going winging, I only wanna use one pump. This great slingshot blowhard pump here, it does the job of both. It can go ahead and do wings as well as inflatables up to 18 PSI. And that's about what we need for this inflatable style board. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my, my blowhard pump so I don't have to carry multiple pumps down to the beach. Step one is going to be unfurling your large board and locating the inflate valve. The inflate valve looks like this. It has a closure. It also has a spring load button in here that's gonna open it and close the valve. So go ahead and locate the valve, press it down and press it up to make sure you have the spring disengaged. The spring needs to be in the up position in order to allow the airflow to stop. So make sure when you press the valve, you want it in the up position. I'm then gonna go ahead and unfurl my board so that I can 
make sure I have enough space in my area. I'm gonna go ahead and take my pump, which comes with the high pressure sup adapter that comes with the blow hard pump. Most of the high pressure sup pumps will have this valve standard on the pump hose, but in this case, I'm gonna take the adapter, I'm going to push it firmly down into the valve and twist it in the clockwise orientation to secure it to the head of the valve. That way the hose is locked into place and I don't need to keep my hand on the hose and I can go ahead and start pumping up the inflatable. Just like with any inflatable, you wanna go ahead and put your feet on the pumps and you're just gonna take your time and start applying air pressure through the pump into the, into the board. So as you start to get some PSI in this thing, you're gonna notice it's gonna start to assume its shape. However, it's really important that you get this thing up to a higher PSI than you may think you need to. Minimum of 15 PSI, anywhere from 15 to 20, is gonna get this thing really rigid and it's gonna make the board perform way better in the water. So keep pumping. All right, so now that we've reached our PSI recommendation, we're gonna go ahead and grab our hose and carefully untwist it from the valve. If you did everything right, no air should come rushing out. If a bunch of air comes rushing out, it's probably because you had the valve in the wrong position. Go ahead and close the valve, pump it back up to the PSI. Once your hose is removed, grab your stopper, twist it clockwise, and now this board is inflated and ready to move on to the next segment. All right, so our board is pumped up. We're gonna go ahead and grab the other pieces of equipment that we need, which is gonna be the rear fin, the keelboard fin or the skeg or the supwinder fin and our leash. And those are the three pieces we're gonna to need to complete our setup. So we're gonna grab our board here by the handle. We're gonna flip the whole thing over. And you can see now that I have two fin boxes here on the board. I have a rear one that's further towards the tail and I have a middle one that's more towards the center. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my two fins. Easy enough. My rear fin is going to be my surf style longboard fin and my center fin is going to be my skeg or supwinder style fin. I'm gonna go ahead and install the supwinder one first because it's a little bit harder to do than the rear fin. So I'm gonna go ahead and unscrew my two part screw. It's a standard longboard. Um, fin box screw and I'm gonna screw it back together so that it's assembled and screwed together. I'm going to slide that into the fin box and put it into the back of the fin box. Now take care to remove the screw so you don't drop it in the box. You're gonna hold on to the screw. Now you're gonna go ahead and pick up your keel style board and you can see it's got a brass tab up here at the front. That brass tab is going to be inserted into the box like so. You're going to slide the brass tab forward which is gonna lock the fin down into the fin box. You're going to then lever the fin backwards and using some pressure to push that board or that fin down into the board aligning the holes of the screw and the surf tab, and then simply hand tightening down that screw to secure the rear of the fin. It's gonna take a couple cranks because it's a really fine threaded bolt. Boom, tighten that down. This thing is in and ready to go. Next, we're gonna move to the back fin. Now it is a very similar style fin, except for it does not have a tab. It has a quick system. So all you need to do is locate the front of the fin, which is the side with the little flange here. You're once again gonna insert that into the box, slide it forward in the box, and then you're simply gonna snap the fin down into place. And that is how you put your fin in. It's pretty straightforward and easy. In this case, the last piece of equipment that I need to set up is my leash. And we are gonna go ahead and grab any surf leash. In this case, we have a ride edge and coil leash. I love these coil leashes because they don't drag in the water and they stay out of the way. They're small and compact. Let's go ahead and grab your surf leash. You're gonna open up the Velcro closure side here. You're gonna find your rear leash attachment, which in this case is a metal D-ring. You're gonna go ahead and slide the Velcro through the D-ring and you're gonna do the triple overlap. That's one Velcro down, 
one Velcro down and a final piece of Velcro to secure the leash onto the board. And there you have it. You have your leash attached. You have your board inflated to 15 or more PSI. And you have your two fins, both your centerboard skeg style fin and your rear fin in, um, already put into the board. And this thing is ready to go on the water. All right, now that we have our keel style board set up, we're gonna go ahead and grab our board that's completely assembled. We're gonna grab our wing and our pump and we're gonna go to the beach and we're gonna get our first session on the water.